Oh, Pico 8 was in the BLM bundle. Sweet. If you're not familiar with Pico 8, it's a fantasy console with a lot of fun features like 128 by 128 resolution, 16 colors, some other stuff. It has a very old school feel but with polish and more accessibility. I've been seeing a lot of people do some pretty creative stuff with it on Twitter and wanted to try it out myself. First I ran through the intro and the docs where I made a circle I could move around the screen with the arrow keys. Input is pretty interesting in Pico 8 because you only have 12 buttons, 4 directional buttons, and an X and O button which are all mapped to different keyboard keys. Then you get the those same six buttons again for player two if your game is multiplayer. Um, and then you also get some basic methods for drawing rectangles and circles you can use. And next I loaded some demos, messed with them, and poked around their code. Pico 8 makes it very easy to look through other projects code. It has a built-in code editor and you can hit escape on any project to immediately view its code. It's kind of annoying though because you can't see very much code at a time due to the low resolution and some characters look very similar with this font. You can use an external code editor but it seemed like kind of a chore to set up. Another minor annoyance is that all the letters are capitalized if you hold shift and type you'll get symbols instead. When I first started writing code while looking at tutorials I saw they had capitalized letters so I would instinctively hold shift when typing and then get gibberish. Uh, not a huge deal and I got over it pretty quickly. Anyways after messing with the demos I started watching Nerdy Teacher's platformer tutorial series. I was pretty impressed by it. Very high quality tutorial series. Doesn't waste any time at all. That introduced me to Pico 8 sprite editor. It's basic, very easy to use, and does everything you would need when working with sprites this low resolution. Also, Pico 8 has a pre-made 16 color palette you can't change. All Pico 8 games use these colors, which I think is pretty neat. After you're done making sprites, you can go into the map editor and draw out your sprites as tiles. But that's about it for the visual side of things. Pico 8 is very code oriented. It's different from standard game engines like Unity or Godot that are built around drag and dropping things and creating scenes and stuff. There really isn't much built in stuff in Pico 8 in terms of game logic. You have to do everything yourself. For example, collisions. In the sprite editor, you can apply flags to individual sprites. Then in the tutorial I followed, you would choose a direction to check for collision, get four points in a rectangle on that side, and then convert those points to map coordinates by dividing them by eight, since all sprites are eight by eight pixels. And then you check if there's a tile at any of those coordinates that has the flag you've chosen for collision. Um, yeah, a lot harder than just adding a collider node. Also, instead of just making a player object and adding it to your scene, you create a global dictionary containing the player's data, such as x and y position and velocity, and the index of the sprite to display there. Each sprite you make has a unique index. Then you go into the draw function and manually draw the player's sprite at its position. Then to animate the sprite you use the time method. You have to store the last frame time in the player's data and you modify the sprite index when the time you know gets high enough. And you got to do this for every unique element in your game. Except for map tiles you use the map function to draw sections from the map editor. Oh and you have to manually clear the screen every frame before doing all this as well. Pico 8 uses Lua by the way which is one of my least favorite programming languages. Why? 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 Also, you're limited to a maximum of 65,000 characters, so you have to be mindful if you're making a larger game, uh, you know, be, be efficient with your code. One thing that is kind of neat that I haven't mentioned is that um, when you're getting input, you actually type the symbol for that input instead of typing in the name of the input. And the way you do that is you just hit like Shift L for left, Shift R for right, you know, that kind of thing, um, which is kind of neat. I think it makes the code look more interesting and readable. After about an hour watching the platformer tutorials, I had a character animated and running around. I was surprised at how smooth it felt considering the low resolution of the game. Um, not much later I got the camera moving around as well and some debug displays and figured I was ready to start my own project. I threw together some simple sprites and got an animated character running around. Copied as much code as I could over from the platform tutorial and just adapted it for top down. One annoying thing that cost me a lot of time was that while in Lua arrays start at 1, flags in Pico 8 start at 0 and I ended up mixing that up and had collisions that didn't work for a while. Definitely feels very inconsistent. Why can't you just be normal Lua? Next I made a boomerang that you throw. It reuses a lot of the player code but will travel in the last direction the player moved. It has a start speed and just decelerates over time and then keeps decelerating until it's going backwards and once it's moving faster backwards than its start speed was forwards it will stop and fall to the ground and you can pick it up by walking into it if it's going backwards or if it's on the ground. Then I just had to make some enemies. I made these simple ghost things that travel through walls because I didn't want to 
deal with pathfinding. Enemies are stored in an array that the draw function iterates over. To spawn more enemies, every two seconds the enemies update method just adds another enemy table to the enemies list, sets their position to randomly be at one corner or side of the screen from the player, so they spawn in random directions just off screen, and the boomerang when it's thrown will also iterate through the enemy list and check if each ghost is within a certain distance. If any of them are, it marks them dead and their death animation plays and then they get deleted from the list. Finally, I put in a kill counter that gets printed to the top left and a death check for the player when a ghost gets in range and when the player dies, a restart message appears and you can't move anymore. Uh, I think that's good enough for one day. I haven't touched the music and sound editor in Pico 8 at all, but I'm not much of a sound guy and I've been working for over six hours straight on this and can't really muster any more enthusiasm for this right now. Um, so final thoughts, Pico 8 is a neat tool or fantasy console. It's definitely geared towards old school style development, which is cool, but not really what I'm into with game development right now. I just want to make lots of games as quickly and smoothly as possible, and this definitely isn't the tool for that. Would I recommend it? Um, if you got it in a bundle, definitely check it out for sure. Um, but if you didn't, it is $15. So if you're just wanting to make games, go pick up Unity or Godot or something. They're free and they work great. If you're really into old school game development and you like working with lots of retro style restrictions, then you'll definitely like Pico 8 and should pick it up for sure. And that's all. Thanks for watching. If you want to support my channel, check out my 3D game art course linked in the description. I'll also put a link to the game I made if you want to play it.